But you know, if you know me, it's not my favorite, but we're gonna try it out because we are looking for sound. I see confused faces in the AV booth. Ah, I'm on, better? Better. Beloveds, I am so glad you're here this evening. Celebration of spirit. And we are going to have a unique evening, um, uh, an atypical format that we usually do. And I am excited for you to get to be a part of that. We are celebrating a lot of folks. And one of the things we are celebrating is the Guadalupe feast day, which is tomorrow. One of my favorite feast days, and um, if you have heard me preach on Guadalupe before, you know that I consider her the goddess of mixed girls. And she is someone that um, holds a really special place in my heart in the goddess realm. Because for me, she is the mishmash of Mother Mary and Tonantzin, the Aztec goddess. And there's a lot of history there. And if you want to know more, go check it out. I'm not going to talk about that tonight. And maybe the AV team can help me later this week, but I will put links up to my previous talks on Guadalupe, the last two mid-Decembers for the last couple of years. But for me, she represents specifically this year for this time we have together is really honoring all of these beloved humans who make up this community and this mishmash of beliefs and, and lineages and cultures and traditions that all of us who are present right here and right now bring into the space. 
And I celebrate it every week. I light a candle for Guadalupe every week on my Sabbath. Because I mix up faith traditions on a regular basis. Anybody else? Yeah. Right? That is one of the beauties and honors of this time in history. Is we have access to one another in ways that were never possible before the internet. Right? We have access to other cultures, other people's daily lives, maybe more access than we really need. However, there's this beautiful thing that we could celebrate and be really intentional about, which is that every through line and every lineage that crosses paths in your life, in the life of this community, can be used for good. Right? We can look at the ways our faith traditions are really different and celebrate that. And we can look at the way our faith traditions may benefit one another. Certain rituals or ceremonies that have maybe been in your ancestral lineage that have carried through and probably shifted and shaped and morphed along the way. You can invite someone who maybe doesn't have that shared lineage into your tradition, into your ceremony and ritual. You may find, like I found, like Catholicism is not a thing as far as I know in any of my family histories. I'd love some Guadalupe. And so to honor Guadalupe, I did the work of doing the research and learning her history and understanding the conquistadors and the colonization and all of the debate around her history and the way she may or may not have come into being. And so I honor the Aztec tradition and I honor the Catholic tradition when I celebrate and make my own Guadalupe. What an awesome thing I get to do in 2020 something, right? As a mixed girl in America with no Catholic or Aztec heritage, this is something that I've been able to be benefited by. How cool is that? And I tell you, there is a benefit in every single chair that is filled in this room tonight, every being who's on the other side of that camera you bring a benefit. You bring something to put in the mix for good, right? For honoring, for celebrating spirit. And when we do that honorably, when we do that intentionally, consciously, you and I do the work of spiritual diversity. You and I do the work, the labor involved of really becoming aware of other faith traditions and practices and norms that may be different than yours, looking for the ways that they are really different, not trying to homogenize it all, but to honor it and to look at the ways like, wow, that's really different than, than anything I've practiced or understood in my life, but wow, I am now enriched by this. I now can celebrate with you. I now can widen my arms, widen my heart, widen my understanding and awareness and consciousness to include more. Yeah? And so I've been thinking about this Guadalupe season and how it kind of lands for me in this winter moment, in this moment of being invited to slow. 
invited to rest, invited to move more into the dark. And one of the ways that I've really been sitting with Guadalupe's story in that context is thinking about that the wholeness of life, the wholeness of spirit, which is plenty big, right? To hold all these traditions and all these stories and all these ceremonies and rituals. And it's also big enough to hold the tragedies that go along with some of these stories and some of these histories. It's also big enough to hold the, 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 the reality that Guadalupe did not come into being out of some like lovely moment. Guadalupe came into being out of colonization and the conquistadors basically slaughtering the Aztecs and stealing their land. And yet spirit is big enough to hold all of it. And I was thinking about what happens when I allow myself to hold all of it. I allow myself to be changed, to be impacted, to be moved by the whole story. Not just her metaphorical representation to me as a mixed girl, but also as a mixed girl that gives me more permission to hold my own story. The things that coalesce in my being, the histories and the lineages that come together as me right here in this moment. Some of it freaking fantastic and some of it heinous and dark. And so I invite you to lean on Guadalupe over this next week or bits of time to lean on the rising of a new goddess out of some heinous, tragic shiznit. Because sometimes that's how we rise. It's out of the hard stuff. And we can celebrate that too. We can honor all that makes up a moment. And let us be grown by it, be shaped by it, be changed by it, by, be expanded by it. And so I'm going to invite you as we move into this celebration of spirit tonight to allow yourself to include the totality of all that went into this evening. All the humans who have been love in action who have been heartbroken, who have been in grief, who have been in, in giving, who have been in supporting and holding, who have been in prayer. Every single one of those contributions, and I say contribution as widely as it can go, have come together, have mixed and mashed and collided at times and made this moment possible. This is what we celebrate tonight. This is what delights me over the moon, to get to be a part of community mishmash. Because it is holy, it is sacred, it is messy, and it is good. So, in honor of all that good and messy, I am going to invite you to turn and watch a thank you video that we've put together from all the love and action over the year. And my 2020 practice, if you want to come forward so you can see. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, 
Gratitude to the right of me. Gratitude above me. Gratitude below me. Gratitude within me. Gratitude all around me. I'm so grateful. 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 Gratitude before me. Gratitude behind me. Gratitude to the left of me. Gratitude to the right of me. Gratitude above me. Gratitude below me. Gratitude within me. Gratitude all around me. I'm so grateful. 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 Wow. Uh, <laughs> so, beloved community means to me um, a life free of judgment and seeing people as uh, a manifestation of their spirit. And I think that has been the most powerful thing that has happened for me uh, since joining the session. Come on. Everybody at home, I want you to get up. I want you to feel this love. Come on. One love. One heart. Let's get together and feel alright. One love. One heart. Let's get together and feel alright. Get together and feel all right. Let them all pass all their dirty remarks. Hmm. So I would like to now invite all of our 2022 contributors, whether you were a volunteer or a financial giver or any version of contributing that you've done in the year of 2022, please stand. Anything, come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I celebrate you, thank you. All right, I would love to bring up our practitioners of the week, Joanna and Ben Clark. Thank you. It is our honor to honor the newest practitioners. I'm Joanna, this is Ben. Somebody asked me what our couple name is. It's Ben Joe. <laughs> Welcome to our newest practitioners. We spell, celebrate spirit in you, as you, as practitioners. While we are celebrating that today, we do acknowledge that you have been serving here since you completed your studies two years ago. I am so grateful for every one of you. You have each contributed to the life and being of our center. I love Amani's recent reminder that even though we no longer have our own structure to meet in, we, all of us, are the center. We hold the center for our center. 
You have done that and are doing that each in your own unique way. This enriches the whole of us, the whole of our community. Next year will be my 20th year serving as a licensed practitioner. The journey has been rich and full, uh, full of learning, and it just gets richer and deeper. Many changes and challenges along the way, and the challenges caused me to reach down deep inside and be open to the shifts that were occurring. To quote Jan Nolan, Today, I give gratitude for all the struggles I've experienced, for they have awakened me to my divine and beautiful self. You have each stepped up as we have gone through many changes and challenges in the last three years, each in your own particular unique way, giving your gifts, lending your voices to our community process. I remember the prayer circle that you all initiated on Wednesday nights in our old sanctuary. That was so sweetly inspiring to me. Then there was Jan and Dino taking care of the garden and of each other. Maddie contributing strongly on the Prosperous Life team and her willingness to attend council meetings. Krista leading me and white supremacy study groups and Paul Cuffey leading the BIPOC group. And Bonnie building beloved communities in Virginia and Dino was the catalyst for the prayer and practice sessions on Friday evenings that have benefited many. These are just a few of your contributions. Welcome, welcome. I look forward to seeing what else you come up with. Ben was inspired to write something for you. I guess we could call this a poem. It's at least a rhyme. It's the ode to our newest practitioners. You started taking new thought classes. They opened your eyes better than glasses. But what about becoming a practitioner? With a big gulp, you signed up with no conditioner. Prac 1 and Prac 2 studies and classes made you go deep, building your knowledge and faith to serve your peeps. Fretting an exam that worked out fine Passing orals was an anxious time. You passed all the hurdles with flying colors. It is now a joy to give you some honors. Ever since you've served our community with love and devotion, how you did it, I have no notion. Through COVID and the building sale, your faith in the one lit a light that can't be undone. As we celebrate you on this day, for your continuing service to us, we pray. Will you be my refuge, my haven in the storm? Will you keep the embers warm when my fire is all but gone? Will you remember and bring me sprigs of rosemary? Be my sanctuary till I can carry on, carry on. Carry on. This one knocked me to the ground. It brought me to my knees. I should have seen it coming, but it surprised me. Will you be my refuge? My haven in the storm. Will you keep the embers warm when my fire is all but out? Will you remember and bring me sprigs of rosemary? Be my sanctuary till I can carry on, carry on, carry on.
All right, how gorgeous are these humans? <laughs> All right, and uh, we have a Bonnie Chavez from G Virginia is up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and we are missing our Paul Cuffey, but we trust that he is well and will be with us when he's able. But before we begin, I want to tell you a little bit, for those of you who may not know, about what it means to be a professional licensed spiritual practitioner in the Centers for Spiritual Living movement. So these beloveds, and that beloved on the screen, completed a minimum of six accredited education prerequisite classes, and most of them completed even more than that, which usually takes a few years to get done. And then they commit to two more years of practitioner training, which they got to spend a lot of time with me along the way. And this group in particular had to move their training online because COVID hit in the middle of their second year. And they handled it like champions, like absolute champions. So then in the midst of all the COVID crazy, then they have to prepare for final exams and oral panels before they are licensed. How was that? Good times, yeah? Good times, good times. But what really begins to happen through that process is there's a discernment that happens in the heart and mind and body and soul of each one of these humans, where they discern what is spirit calling them to do. Why spend years on this journey? And they begin to answer that why in a deeper and deeper way. And I think this group got to answer maybe a little harsher and faster and deeper than some other practitioner classes who did not have to do this through COVID. Because they didn't get the usual fanfare. They didn't get to join the cool kids club in the sanctuary. They had to answer their why and their call in their own hearts, on their own, and support each other in the best ways they could through it. So I have questions for each of you. So because I'm not on my headset, I'm going to ask, let's have Dino come up so I can actually see that face. Okay. Thank you. So Dino, as you have stepped further into this call as a licensed spiritual practitioner, as a clergy member, is it your heart's desire to continue to deepen on that journey and serve as a licensed spiritual practitioner? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Come on over, Jan Nolan. Jan Nolan, you have walked a hard road in this journey. And what I know about you is you keep showing up. And are you ready to deepen on that journey and continue to show up as a licensed spiritual practitioner? Absolutely. Krista Keller, my gosh, your whole life has changed since you've done this. You are not only a licensed spiritual practitioner, but you're our centered man manager, which, <laughs> and as you've continued to integrate the business of this community and the heart of your journey and call as a licensed spiritual practitioner, what I know for sure is you will continue to deepen in that integration and service. And so my question for you is, do you still have a holy sacred yes to that integration and service? There's no other answer. <laughs> what is that? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Madikins, as I call her, you can only call her Maddie Suarez. 
Maddie, you are a light that will not be put out. And you are someone who may not obviously be seen on the outside as, as who's going to go all the way there in their practice, who's going to leave their job without a plan because you know that there's something more for you in this life, who's going to spend six months in a deep dive of finding your joy and discovering the jewel that has been there all along and that you are. So my question for you, Maddie Madikins, are you a holy sacred yes to exploring and discovering more of that jewel and giving it to the rest of us as a licensed spiritual practitioner? Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to invite those of you in the room to turn and face the screen in the back. Bonnie Chavez and I have a, have a thing, which is I, I cannot say Bonnie Chavez's name without saying her whole name. Bonnie Chavez! So Bonnie, um, Bonnie came into this practitioner studies like in the whirlwind of what I would say is like a spiritual Wonder Woman journey. And also uh, walked away from a, a stable, secure career and said, I have big gifts to give the world. And I want to bring spiritual teaching to corporate world, to nonprofit community building beloveds. And I know that I can do that like a champion. And then decided to move across the country in the middle of COVID. <laughs> so amazing Bonnie Chavez whose work now is called Building Beloved Communities, and she serves nonprofit communities with a spiritually grounded approach to being awesome. Are you a holy sacred, holy sacred yes to continuing to build beloved community as a licensed spiritual practitioner? With my whole heart, yes. All right, let's give these beloveds another round of applause. Take it in. All right, and we are not done celebrating yet. I would love to bring Jeffrey McNutt up to the stage as we continue this celebration of spirit with some new mem with some new members. You are never alone. I'm not alone. I brought Tracy up with me and wanted to kick off this portion of the gathering by just hearing a few words from her. She was in our uh, membership class last year. And if you know anything about Tracy, she has thrown herself fully into this uh, community. And so I just wanted to give her a chance to be heard. You hit the button? I think you just talk. It says off. No, it's just go. OK, I guess it is on. <laughs> Okay, um, my name is Tracy. I've been a part of the Albuquerque Center for Spiritual Living for three and a half years. So I wait about two years for the membership class to actually take place because of time delays and COVID delays. And I really align with the belief system in this church. I really love the energy in the community and in Reverend Amani and in Reverend Amani and the messages that are shared each week. And so I'm very much committed to being a part of this church volunteering, being a part of being in service. I enjoy being a member and really belonging to this sense of community. So this year we're celebrating new members in, in, in three ways, which is also kind of the, the way we roll here in this community. Uh, in person, uh, so I'd like to call up to the stage uh, Bella Blue. Welcome, Miss Bella Blue. And just a 
a personal story. Uh, Bella is rejoining and reconfirming her membership with us. Uh, she was around when I got here and was a part of what I would call Team Jeff when I was in a, a difficult place and really finding my way. Um, and Bella was here at that point in time to welcome me and um, and um, would come to my house, would, uh, you know, join in real deep spiritual community. And then she went away and, and now my heart is full because here she is again. <laughs> also, we have, uh, I'm hoping she's, uh, she, we won't be able to see her on screen, but I'm hoping she's uh, watching at home. And that's Laura Maness. And Laura Maness is uh, joining us from Rio Grande Center and uh, bringing her membership over here. And she is currently right in the thick of prac studies and is going to be hopefully on stage the next time we do our installation of practitioners. So just a welcome wave to Laura <laughs> and welcoming her. And then up on the screen uh, behind us is a picture of the PVs. And if you don't know the force of nature that the PVs are, they are, uh, they've come into this community in the last few years and just, again, like, Tracy before them are just throwing themselves into every nook and cranny of it. And when I think of community, the first people I think of are the PVs. They cannot join us right now because they are in the Philippines. They're in the Philippines where they have built intentional family and intentional community, um, you know, in the role of surrogate parent and mentors and just building, like I said, an intentional family of well into the double digits of Filipinos that they have sponsored into their family and they have put them through school and they have mentored them throughout their lives. And I wish they were here, but I am so proud and grateful to know the PVs and to welcome them into membership. And we will celebrate with them when they return from the Philippines. And to them. So we have a little gift for Bella and a candle because we see you as the light that you are. And so now I would like, time for that, Emma? So what I would like to do now is to welcome Bella and to welcome Laura and to welcome the PVs. We're going to stand, turn to the screen, and we're going to sing together uh, the light that you are. I see you as the light that you are. I see you as the love that you are. Oh, I see you as the light that you are. I see your light. I see your love. I see who you are. Sing it out. I see you as the light that you are. I see you as the love that you are. Oh, I see you as the light that you are. I see your light. I see your love. I see who you are. One more time to somebody with you. I see you as the light that you are, Robert Muller. I see you as the love that you are. I see you as the light that you are. I see your light. I see your love. I see who you are. All right, we are moving into the closing time, and I, I just wanted to um, remind all of you that there is a fancy pants dinner. <laughs> waiting for us in the social hall, catered by our beloved Joyous Creations and Jeffrey McNutt. Thank you, as, our, as the centers thank you to you. And um, it's pretty fantastic because guess what? It's a mishmash of culture and culinary delights. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna hand it over to Ben and Joanna to. Just, just a few announcements. Uh... Please join us on abqcsl.org uh, to, to view our calendar of, of events and find all the ways that you can join us 
Please sign up for our newsletter and to receive daily morning spirit calls and evening affirmations. You're invited to go to the About Us section of our website and choose a practitioner to pray, to pray with you. If you'd like our practitioners and ministers to hold you in prayer during this week, please email your prayer request to prayer at abqcsl.org or fill out a prayer request form in person at the table outside the sanctuary. And, and Ben and I will uh, be giving you your daily spirit callings and affirmations this week. We like to share the week. <laughs> and please join us on Christmas Eve for a very special service with the Unitarian Fellowship. Details are in our weekly newsletter. And thank you to Alicia Kitts, who is holding high watch for us this evening. Please join us this Friday at 530 in the Memorial Hall for the final art of prayer and practice. And if you would please join me in today's affirmation, and to do that, if you would rise and turn around, and it's on the screen in the back of the sanctuary. I celebrate all of the beautiful ways that spirit shows up as my spiritual community. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, Jordana, I, I, uh, I'm pulling a fast one here. Uh, this celebration of spirit would not be complete without honoring our beloved minister, Amani Malaika, for shepherding us through this time and also completing her arduous journey to ministerial amazingness, uh, which she did also during uh, the pandemic years. So uh, we have a little gift for her. Flowers for you. Aww, thanks, guys. So it goes without saying that that um, Amani has been the rock and the glue, and just um, I I'm probably going to start crying if I say too much more. So let's all just um, stay for dinner and 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 love each other up, and 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 um, all you practitioners in the back that are newly installed, you have my heart too. And I can't wait to celebrate with you this evening as well. Uh, enjoy.